Is that correct? Survive in advance, I mean, uh, laser focus, all of that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, coach wouldn't go for the, you're in the playoff now. No, we're not in the playoff, mm -hmm. but just the, how do you get everybody to focus on one thing? Well, I mean, that's that's really the only focus we need right now is just win win every week. So right now we got to win our game this week. we got to beat Maryland. That's the only goal. It's the only thing that matters. Nothing else matters. So we're just focused on getting better every day and going out and, and winning a game on Saturday. Is KJ home getting better? Oh, yeah. KJ's coming. Every week he's gotten better and better and better and better. So he's, we're really excited about him. Is he the most improved? Yeah, I mean, he's he's been moving up the totem yeah. pole. And, I mean, he's he's as valuable a guy as we have right now, really. So we're excited about him. Is he the most improved wide receivers? Is, what, is he the most improved wide receiver on your team since the beginning of the year, Zach? Um, probably. I mean, he's in the, in the conversation. I mean, he's he's gotten a lot better. I mean, we had high expectations. He had a, he, he, we, I expected him to do that, you know. And he's just kind of fulfilled expectations so far. So I'm excited about where he's going to be. But definitely, he's in the conversation for that. He caught the first touchdown pass of the year. No so. question. Yeah, so that's what he, he that's what he keeps right? saying. <laughs> he sounds like him. Yeah. <laughs> but did the injury set him back a little bit? I mean, is, I mean, not really. really. I mean, to be honest, I mean, it set him back in the fact that he couldn't play for those couple of weeks. But yeah. he uh, he came back, and the first day back, he looked, I mean, normal, which was bizarrely shocking. When you say he's getting better and better, what does that mean? From a wide receiver coach's standpoint, mother, he's running better routes. I mean, yeah, he's all of it. He's, he's playing faster. Yeah, you know, he's he's always run real crisp routes. He's understood the offense, and it's just as he's getting experience, he's, his his game speed and his practice speed is improving. Just because I think he's getting more comfortable, he's getting a better understanding, a deeper understanding, and so he's able to pl uh, play faster. Zach, like I asked him after the him. Northwestern game. He, he had that catch in the fourth quarter that sparked you guys. I said, yeah. can this be a launching point, a turning point? And he said, well, yeah, maybe it can. Did you see, did, did, do players need validation in a game like that and then take it from there? Yeah, I mean, a, a player's career is usually, it takes little small victories to kind of build momentum and really have them catapult into a great career. So when he made that play, that was one small victory. It was a chance for him to kind of build momentum in his own personal career and, and, and how valuable he is and his role on the team. So when he made the play, it was obviously a critical play, and it was a big big thing that we needed to see him do. And I, obviously it wasn't by chance that he was in that situation. He had earned the trust to be in the situation, and then he came through and he made the play. So it, it was a big big deal for him and big deal for us. Zach, what have you seen from Ben Victor in practice a couple weeks ago? And for at least three weeks, Coach Meyer said he was so close. Yeah, he's just a baby. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's, just, he's like Bambi, but he is so talented. And so he's he makes some plays where you're like, wow. And then, you know, he has some freshman moments. But he's he's came a long way just from the day he got here until now to the point where we're playing him. I mean, playing him in meaningful snaps, throwing him meaningful balls. And he's had, you know, had a couple opportunities where he needs to make a play. But some of the stuff you expect playing an 18-year-old, you know what I mean? And so I'm really pleased with where he is. Uh, he's got a ways to go, but but I'm really excited about so it. Is it more just time, his talent yeah. or what uh, made him improve to earn more playing time? Well, same as any receiver. I mean, he learned the, learned the offense, learned the position, learned what, what I teach, learned the fundamentals of the position. I mean, he was raw, pretty raw coming out of high school. Uh, and so he just he's got better. He's got better every day and, and every week, and slowly got to the point where he said, "Wow, like this, he's starting to play like the kid I you know I recruited." Hmm. What was that was last week? I mean, nine or ten guys touched the ball, and then Curtis with over 130 receiving yards. Is that kind of the pinnacle of performance that you want to see your guys do? Um, yeah, I mean, we we just want to do our job, and make plays when the plays present themselves. So whoever is in the game, we're going to be accountable that they're going to get it done. And so I don't, we don't really worry about how many guys touch the ball or how many yards Curtis has. Obviously, Curtis is a great player right now, and he, he's a feature of the offense. So we're, we would like him to touch it, but it's not. We're not worried about did he have nine touches or seven touches or 12 touches. That is it's kind of irrelevant. It's that when Curtis is in, he better make the play, he better get open, and he better do his job. Same with everyone else. Jack, you were there when Percy was there. You were in Florida when Percy yeah. Harvin was there. Do you do you see any I don't know resemblances, whatever you want to call it, uh, comparisons between him and? And Curtis? Yeah, they're similar. They're explosive uh, playmakers. I think Curtis is more of a receiver than Percy was. Mm -hmm. um, but the Percy was one of the, I mean, the most explosive guys with the ball in his hands I've ever seen. So it's uh, there's always going to be a comparison just because of the offense, style of offense, the, and, and that position. But um, they're different players. But yeah, I see I see similarities. Zach, it, DJ Durkin was with Michigan last year in that defense. Anything mm -hmm. you can kind of take from that style, obviously, now that he's the head coach of preparing for that? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of the finer defensive minds in the, in the country. So a guy like that doesn't leave the team up north and go to Maryland and just all of a sudden the D coordinator's running the show. I mean, he, he's obviously 
that's his baby, the defense. So there's a lot of similarities, and you know, it's not it's not a complicated defense. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a well well coached, well thought out, sound defense that just kind of does what they do. Do you remember him from your time at Bowling Green? Oh yeah, I've known him <laughs> since since I was 18. What, I mean, do you have any good stories? <laughs> no, 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 no stories. <laughs> nothing, it, nothing you can say publicly, right? He was a GA. You were a GA for Urban. I mean, what's it like to be a grad assistant for Urban Meyer? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I can't. I have nothing to compare it to. So, um, it's it's really, to be honest, it's it's hard, but it's it develops you into. I mean, you look at his the guys he's had as GAs. I mean, where they are now. I mean, it's it's like winning the lottery, but it's not easy. So, it, most people probably wouldn't want to do it or survive it, but you you learn how to be a coach and you learn at the highest highest level. So, it, I mean, it, to, it's legitimately like winning the lottery. It's you, you get that opportunity, you like, wow, I better take advantage of this. I think Ben just hit the lottery with that quote. Um, I was just wondering, um, Ben Victor, did you been asked that already, probably? Yes. Um, well, hey, I, I got to get it. <laughs> we talk about all the time players and stuff that throughout the year are going to play, they're going to play, they're coming along, and then they never play for the last four years. Not just you, the entire staff. And this year, he, you guys did that, and like I was, I was nobody believed it. And then he actually played and played in the second quarter. and. What is it that he's done to really separate himself from some of the other guys? Is it his size? Is he different? Why did he No, I mean, field? you know, we just, we have a, a, an affinity for electric playmakers, and he does things in practice that are just, I mean, freaky. Uh, he has an unbelievable skill set, and it was never, does he have the talent or ability to play tomorrow? It was, is he mature enough to handle an environment? So the way the season went, there wasn't a lot of time, opportunity to get him in a game and get him some experience, kind of, you know, get him weathered a little bit and get him ready to be a guy that will put in